Do you think that this tree is the loneliest tree in the world? Yeah, I think so. So good morning guys, welcome to another episode. Today we're gonna go find Lonely Doug. It's it's apparently the loneliest tree here, well at least on Vancouver Island. So if you're new to the channel, I'm on Vancouver Island right now and we're heading towards Port Renfrew which is that way right there and we're gonna go check this tree out. It's famous here, I've never seen it and so me and Rebecca jumped in the truck and we're gonna go check it out. Now as you can see here, we didn't bring the camper because apparently the road to get there isn't very uh, camper or high-sided vehicle friendly. Uh, but so we're driving down this road and we passed uh, this lake here on our right hand side. This lake is called Fairy Lake and there's a tree you can't see it yet. I'm going to put this long angle lens on. It's supposed to be the most photographed tree. Oh, learn, <laughs> learn how to walk much. <laughs> it's supposed to be the most photographed tree in BC. I believe Rebecca read that. Did you read that? It's supposed to be the most fo photographed tree in BC, right? Yeah. yeah. So here it is. So what are we going to do? We're going to uh, photograph it just a little bit more. <laughs> it's a beautiful day right now. It's been rainy for like the last week and so we've had a couple days of sunshine. So why not get out and uh, do a little bit of exploring. As I'm filming this, right behind my truck, it sounds like there's a beautiful, beautiful waterfall. Like look, look at this. These waterfalls are everywhere here on the island. I don't think they believe me but tell them that there's waterfalls like this everywhere here. Oh, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. I mean, this is something you would only see in a movie. It looks like it's staged. Like, it looks like it is set up for a movie. But this is completely natural. Whoa! <laughs> what are you doing? Snacking. Snacking. I've had some comments of people saying that they don't even want to see me in the videos anymore. You're killing it. Me? Yeah. They're like, where's Rebecca? We don't want to hear Taylor. We want to hear Rebecca. I'm barely even in them though. I know. They want to see more of you. Well, hi. <laughs> I sit in the passenger seat and eat a lot. <laughs> is beautiful. Look at that. Have you ever seen a cuter info center? <laughs> Hello? Looking for Lonely Doug. Hello? Whoever commented in the section below saying you shouldn't bring your camper uh, here, good, good call. Like, I mean, I could do it. It's just so much faster just having a truck. Because it is bumpy. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Holy I mean, I've been in worse, but it's always good not to completely destroy the camper if you don't have to. Whoa! Look how blue that is. Beautiful. Now I am going to put a link to the website where we got all these directions from in the description below. But if you're coming up here, I would recommend an SUV or a truck because the road's quite bumpy, but there's a lot of sharp rocks. So I would not recommend bringing a car down these roads. Uh, I just been worried about your tires popping, but I'm very happy. I'm very glad that I have a one ton truck. So uh, I can kind of uh, cruise over these bumps. I think we found it. We found it. We did. Now it's just a little bit of a walk down this road and it's just over there. 
Now this road that you come up, you basically veer right and they uh, want you to have like a radio because this is a very slim and narrow road. Uh, and there's, this is a, I think there's still active logging through this area. So it's a good idea to have a radio uh, just to listen and make sure that there's no trucks coming in and out because uh, you don't want to disrupt their, uh, their work. So basically we came down this logging road um, and then the tree is over there, but we couldn't find a spot to park any closer. So we went down here, turned around, that's when I got the footage saying, hey, there it is. Drove back up this road, parked up there, and now we're basically walking down and then it's a bit of a hike down into the clear cut area, if that makes sense. So you come out from, from that area into this clear cut area. And then I think that the hike, I don't know if there's a path, probably not, but you go down here and the tree is just right there. It's a bit of a hike, eh? Yeah. That's an amazing tree. Woo! See that blue right there? Right. It doesn't look like much from here, but wait until we get to the bottom of it. Yeah. It's still a bit of a hike, I mean some land to cover. Oh yeah, this is a trail here. So for those coming here, make sure you take this log trail. The log trail. The log trail. And at the end, it meets into a trail trail. Boy, I, I should be writing these directions on the website. Go until you see the log trail. <laughs> then it turns into the trail trail. <laughs> and then you're good good. Okay, wait. Now, just like all my other informative videos, I have not done my research. There is a story that goes with this tree. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the drone up and we are going to narrate the story. It's a really interesting story from what I, uh, what I hear. The height is 70 meters. The circumference is just shy of 12 meters and the diameter is just shy of four meters. The American Forestry Association gives it 714 total points. This makes Big Lonely Doug the second largest Douglas fir tree in British Columbia and Canada in terms of total size. And yes, that is quite interesting, but the story that goes along with Big Lonely Doug is much more interesting. On a sunny morning in the winter of 2011, Dennis Cronin parked his truck on the side of a dirt logging road. Dennis's job was to survey land for clear cutting. As he walked through the thigh high undergrowth, something caught his eye. A Douglas fir poking through the forest canopy with a trunk wider than his truck. It was the tallest tree he had ever come across in his four decades in the logging industry. Of course, not knowing at the time, the tree he was looking at was the second largest Douglas fir in Canada. Cronin reached into his vest pocket for a ribbon he rarely used, tore a strip off, and tied it to the thin root. The tape wasn't pink or orange, but green with the words, leave the tree written on it. Today, Cronin's towering fir is one of the last of its threatened species in coastal BC, where 99% of old growth Douglas firs have been logged. They estimated the tree was worth around $50,000 if cut down because the lumber from it could have built roughly five 2,000 square foot homes, but all because of one man it was saved. Pretty cool story, eh? So I hope that you enjoyed that history lesson. This is an amazing tree. Way bigger up close than of course far away, but does not look this big. I mean, look at this. Do you want to film me? Yeah. Back up just so they can see like the actual size of the tree itself. You know? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> and the branches up top are huge and it's just a really cool a really cool thing in this clear cut area. Nate, what do you think? Oh, I love it. Beautiful day. Too. So, the question of the video, babe, is this the loneliest tree in the world? Oh, yeah, I think so. I don't think so, though. Why? Because look at all its friends. It's got friends. Like, look at this. This is his little brother. <laughs> <laughs> but no one understands him. Oh, right. Now the treacherous hike out <laughs> with all the camera gear. Boy, that's a bit of a hike on a nice day. 
you kind of got to be a little bit in shape. I mean, if I can do it, you can do it too. Hey, get away from us, B. We're near Avatar Grove right now, and apparently um, there's like the world's large, or the world's gnarliest tree, or, or Canada's gnarliest tree, and it's just about two kilometers back that way. So I think we're going to go for a little hike and see that, and then we're going to head, uh, head back home if this bee doesn't sting us to death. This is quite a famous place here on the island, and it is uh, Avatar Grove, okay? So basically, the logging road looks like this, and you can go up this way, where the Canada's gnarliest tree is, or you can go that way, and it's a beautiful little walk, and you can also go down to the river. So I think today we're gonna go this way, to the gnarliest, Canada's gnarliest tree. We're getting our workout today. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> so we were just talking about this. We saw the most photographed tree in BC. Yeah. We've seen, in a previous video, we've seen the largest Douglas fir in the world. We just saw the loneliest tree in the world. And we're about to go see the gnarliest tree in Canada. We sure love our trees, don't we? All right, about five more minutes. Just a 15, 10, 15 minute walk up this trail, apparently. I'd highly recommend, we're about five minutes in, I'd highly recommend anyone wanting to do this coming to visit or if you live here and never have, have never come here like I haven't to do it. it it really is worth it a lot of people talk this place up there's a good reason to uh, to do so it's beautiful Look, honey, more, stairs. more what more stairs yeah. oh <sighs> Are we almost there? I don't know. I think so. Oh wait. Wait. Dun, 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 dun. Canada's gnarliest, gnarliest tree. What do you think? Are you king of the world? Queen. Queen of the world. Is it pretty gnarly? I feel like I need to do that every time you say it. Yeah. Canada's gnarliest tree. Gnarly! So guys, we're just in Port Renfrew, or I guess we're past Port Renfrew now. Um, coming into Lake Cowichan, we had a really great day. Um, we saw Big Lonely Duck, and then we went to Avatar Grove and saw the gnarliest, Canada's gnarliest tree. We're signing off. We're Rebecca's signing off. signing off because everyone doesn't want to see me anymore and they want to see you. No, so that's I not true. I think I'm gonna hand the channel over to you, babe. No, that's <laughs> not true. Um, so that's all for us today. Now we are getting treats because I want a donut. Oh yeah, we're going to Tim Hortons. We're going to Tim Hortons because what are you gonna get? Because I want a coffee and the are sour you get a coffee? And glazed. Yeah, sour cream glazed. Is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I really wanted an apple fritter, so we're going to get a donut. Keep living that dream. Until next time. No. Subscribe. Frick. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe below. I don't remember how you sign off. Keep living that dream. Until next time, my friends. Take care and bye bye. Oh, do it. Let me do the Jim Carrey. Okay. Alrighty then. Alrighty then. Okay, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just edit that out. <laughs> just kidding. Bye guys. Bye.